Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello, welcome to the first lecture of industrial safety engineering. In today's 35 to 40 minutes of lecture, I will introduce this subject in industrial safety engineering. So, the content is we will see some of the major industrial accidents what has already happened then safety and health issues, stakeholders, accident causation model and knowledge base. Most of the information related to the figure, to the past accidents, to the models are taken from publicly available internet sources and some taken from standard literature. So, in the first lecture, I want to give you what is this subject, why this is important and what is the relevance of this subject to industry, to the academia and finally, what will be the basic requirements to know for uh, to go about or to learn these subjects, the subject as well as um, finally, uh, some um, sketchy blueprint that what is in total industrial safety engineering. And in subsequent lectures, you will see that, uh, that more uh, focused concepts uh, and their elaboration will be made and then uh, we will go to different uh, techniques, tools and, and so far so forth. So, uh, the syllabus is with you. So, you please go through the syllabus as well as um, follow all the uh, lectures whatever will uh, we will uh, show give you as well as the um, I can say the assignments and also use the discussion forum platform and I hope that you will enjoy this industrial safety engineering subject to the level expected and definitely your knowledge on industrial safety engineering in particular and in general in safety engineering will be enriched with this, uh, with this hope I am starting this lecture. First, I will I want to show you a case which is Piper Alpha case that that we have taken a video and which is available. So, the video you first see. You see that 
what is the disaster situation in Piper Alpha case. A mistake, small mistakes may be initiated somewhere and finally, it lead to such a catastrophic accident and a huge explosion and, and then fire and finally, 168 people died. So, this is a, a breakthrough incident I can say because of this incident lot of other development has taken place and I, I request all of you just to go through the Piper Alpha case and the reports available and then understand why this accident has taken place and whether safety engineering as such was uh, applied in totally or not. So, I am, I am keeping it open to all of you. So, after the and that, that, that incident happened and the inquiry everything has taken place, then you, you know that that Sir Bran Appleton, what he has commented on, uh, on this. Safety is not an intellectual exercise to keep us in work. It is a matter of life and death. Please keep in mind matter of life and death. So, if in your lifetime or if in our lifetime we can save one life this is this is enormous so that means everybody of us should be tri triggered to do something so that the life of the people at work in particular or life of people in general the society can be saved so, it is not an easy task as Sir Brian Appleton says, it is the sum of our contributions, sum of our contribution to safety management that determines whether the people we work with live or die. So, we want to seek the answer to this question that whether the people we work with live or die, what system you are giving them to work or what system, uh, under what system we are exposed to work. So, that is whether this is designed in, in, in following the safety engineering principle or not. So, that is what is the totality of this subject. By saying this, I am not saying that we will be dissecting the Piper Alpha case and will be showing you that uh, what are the different failures and what way that safety engineering principles are not applied in, in, in detail, but definitely we will we'll not only this with some other uh, previous accidents we, we will also try to discuss, but this Piper Alpha case is, oh, is open to all of you, you it is your work you can consider that is the prerequisite that you you get the uh, report it is available read it and make the mindset that uh, that ok how safety engineering whatever you knowledge you will gain in this particular subject can be used or where the gaps are there ok. It is not the uh, that Piper Alpha is the only case. So, you will find out there are many such accidents that has happened. You all know that Union Carbide India Limited Bhopal, the case of 3rd December 1984, 3rd December 1984. What happened? What was the event? Event was leakage of water into MIC tank caused increase in temperature and pressure of MIC and release of 40 thousand kg of MIC and what is the loss immediate loss is 2500 people died immediately, immediately 8000 more due to diseases and 500,000 injuries and in fact even today the effect is there. So, 
so can safety engineering help you to understand why such accident has taken place and why when you redesign that or design a new system of similar nature so what are the things you have to do okay so if we go further you see that what actually happened in union carbide case here you see that this is mic storage tank methyl isocyanate 40 tons in e610 then 15 tons in e619 uh, and 6111 6111 619 e619 was empty okay 40 ton 15 ton in here 40 ton here and this one empty water leaked into this water leaked into this and causing runaway heat heating heat producing reaction then you see that there are so many protection measures refrigeration system freon system to cool liquid mic was shut down the design was that that uh, this this uh, may happen under such situation that freon system that will that will be used and to cool liquid mic was shut down in june 1984 to to save money and freon ship to other plants another another one you see water cutting not high enough to reach the gas flare tower designed to burn off gas but a connecting pipe had been removed for maintenance so few thing maintenance here it is basically that is the cost or the benefits business things here what happened the there is a water cut in which basically used uh, but what happened it was not that high the design problem then vent gas scrubber leaking gas could have been detoxified but the scrubber was turned off this is the sop problem so that means when we talk about such accident and it are, these are all high risk plants and in all high risk plants what happened the design will be such that there will be different layer of protection. So, layer of protection like this, this, this and this. So, as a safety engineer if you if you look into this then you will find out that there will be uh, there will be normal control system, normal control which require for the day to day operation then there will be emergency safety system emergency safety system means if something mm, gone wrong then how the system will behave so that 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 uh, th things can be system can be restored to the normal then there will be on site off site counter measures even after that also the when accident has taken place then the consequence to be reduced and there will be a physical containment for hazards and uh, uh, basically that separating uh, separating the hazard from the people or the target ok here it was there but having those things does not mean that it is the full safety engineering it is the design point of view those things must be there what else require else require like the emergency control system countermeasures all those things are basically if I say that under high risk operation these are all risk control measures that risk control measures must be operational also they must work now if i see here refrigeration system is working but it is not it is dedicated for this but it has been it has been bypassed to some other plant so what happened it is it is not the design problem it is the problem with the maintaining maintaining the system protection system given to you similarly here see flower tower this is also it was there the, the control system emergency control system was there but what happened because of poor maintenance that connecting pipe that is that was not working 
this was a design problem because the uh, the height uh, that gas can reach that was not understood. So, that means the height is not sufficient enough and here you see vent gas screw bar that this is also another protection so that the gas whatever will come out that if can be de detoxified at the release point what will happen it will not affect the environment as a whole and the people at society will not be affected. So, that uh, not be affected that much they will be affected by another, but it was it was basically turned off. So, that means one one thing is that you must have a proper design you understand that what are the hazards that can take place and the hazard ultimately lead to accident. So, you have to identify the hazards and then hazards lead to accident hazard lead to accident and accordingly that there will be layer of protections layer of protections. So, all those things during design you have to understand and definitely these are there, but even under very good design system also this will happen if the maintenance, monitoring, control all those things are not done properly. So, all those things will come together under safety engineering. One is design, then if, if you go by the system life cycle then design, build, operation maintenance, disposal all those things will be there at every time you will find out that there will be number of hazards and for every hazard there is protection measures and those protection system must work and that is that is what also to be one is you design into the system you see that they are uh, working. So, all those things are coming under safety engineering. So, very quickly now uh, we will see some of the other um, issues, but from the uh, report there are reports available in net. Now, a few of them just uh, like uh, I have I have written here that storing MIC la in large tanks and filling beyond recommended level, beyond design level, design recommendation you are filling up. So, this is this is not permitted, but it is done. Failure of safety system as I told you that normal control then emergency safety system on site offset counter measures like why this detoxified that vent scrubber was there. Because if the gas is detoxified at the release point then the effect of con impact of gas will be reduced that is off site counter measures, but that was not working because of because these are all coming because of the maintenance control for all those things this is a poor maintenance. To save money safety system have been switched off I do not have any answer to this lack of skilled labor competency competency and an inadequate emergency action plans. So, there are many more but okay these are the few which are basically which are needs to be talked about. So, that means one hand here what happened the design problem one hand the uh, and on the other hand what happened the maintenance and operation problem and all those things come joining together ultimately leads to such disastrous accidents. Another one Chernobyl nuclear power that you know I will very quickly I will say actually this is in uh, 26th April 1986 during test of safety feature called emergency core cooling. You require to have the, uh, the domain knowledge to understand all those things. So, for um, uh, to me basically this is what I am giving you uh, the different example and um, with some information, but this is a nuclear power plant case. So, your knowledge about emergency core cooling and, and although how the nuclear power plant work that also required, but okay for here we are basically setting the tone that why this subject is so much important. So, emergency core cooling catastrophic power increase leading to explosions in in its in its core in turn release radioactive particles and you know the 31 died immediately 
and this much died due to cancer between 1986 to this 4 2004. You see what is there, what is the problem? Operator's error, lack of knowledge. I told you that knowledge, domain knowledge is very important, lack of knowledge about nuclear reactor physics and engineering. This nuclear reactor physics and engineering is a part of that particular subject domain, it is not the part of um, uh, part of uh, everybody. In say, industrial safety engineering, we will not be teach, uh, learning that what is nuclear reactor physics. Rather, what we will be learning here that that how do you make it sure that the safety engineering is in proper place. So, someone who is uh, knowledgeable in nuclear reactor case, he will be in the team, so that uh, the safety engineering is in proper perspective. Violation of SOP, lack of safety culture. So, in a previous example, we have seen that there are design problem, there are maintenance problem, there are competency problem. Here what we are finding out, again we are finding out competency problem and a SOP violation, another one is a safety culture, it is a huge thing, but ok, we are not, we will not be talking about safety culture in industrial safety engineering. Chemical plant Flixbro England in 1974. Rupture of temporary bypass pipe leading to release of 40 tons of cyclohexane, 28 people died and 38 got serious injuries. Poor design of high pressure pipe system by inexperienced engineers, this, this cannot be tolerated. You when you are designing such high risk plant. And you know that the people at work and the society as large may be exposed to such thing. So, you cannot design poorly, because if you design poorly that you will carry forward the entire life cycle of the system unless otherwise it is detected and redesigned. But when you are designing such a high technology system, so you redesign you it is, will not solve the purpose. Simultaneous shutting uh, down of critical systems, it is I can say it is basically a problem with the that oper safe operating procedure that what it should not be done we are dividing. Presence of water in reactors, so more of your design and operation problem here. So, the list is endless, now you can see that I told you that Flixbro England, Bhopal 1984, that leakage of MIC gas, Indiana USA 1988, improper mixing of chemicals, Texas 1989, explosion of fire, so like this. So, there are many more in chemical industry. If you see manufacturing industry, New York City, USA in 1901, a fire flared up at a garment factory, 148 died and 41 injured. In 1988, Piper Alpha oil platform, USA, an explosion fire occurred. Then 1993, Kedar Toy Factory, Thailand fire. 2007, that uh, split of Montel metal steel from Ladle. And you will see that um, the fire industry in recent times also I think in some hospital fire and in some building fire, so many things are there, but this there are many more fire in accidents that have already taken place. Here under manufacturing industry we have enlisted some of them. This is one typical picture I want to show you that how much unsafe it is, there are moving parts. Okay, there are there are projected ends. There are so many things, but these are these are basically bay are open. So and 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 entirely the you see the machine is so such a uh, clumsy. There is no not proper housekeeping. Uh, some dress here. So see this this housekeeping is not proper. The machine is not properly guarded. So machine safety is also important. This is uh, this is basically uh, working in a very hot and humid environment. You must see that 
there are there are there are places in in, uh, in industries particularly in large industries particularly in high risk industries you will find out such things for example this you will get in steel plants so when you design when you a safety engineer must know that someone will be working here so what should be the protective measures what should be the mitigative measures that should be there so he he or she must know that or the team must know that what kind of hazards are available here already sourced whether those hazards are sourced by design or by technology or it is but basically unwanted coming from out of something else here more of health issues are also there then mining industry mining industry the <coughs> number of that huge accident the catastrophic accidents are large also few of them you see that in china gas and coal dust explosion how many people died 1549 workers died but if you if you go down that even in 2001 23 23 september jim walter resources number 5 mine 13 miners died because of a roof fall accident and followed by methane explosion so this the, uh, the end is uh, the, sorry the list is again uh, huge so if we go on uh, listing down the mining accident even in particularly india also uh, that list is also very large what happened to this mine disaster case there because of maybe poor support design or poor method of work roof movement beyond the design level leads to roof fall at 5 17 pm then there are ignition sources scoop battery damaged then methane because of roof fall methane also uh, exposed now methane is the um, source uh, what i can say the combustible material and there is scoop battery damage the, from there the ignition source and you know that ventilation is there so these two combine first explosion taken place now after first explosion what happened ventilation damaged and air flow disrupted so methane accumulated here and in the meantime coal dust accumulated then block lights kept energized ignition source remain there so coal dust methane some uh, everything coming together with ignition source a huge explosion second explosion had taken place and the mine could not be evacuated and as a result what happened 13 miners killed okay so this is this is now is it not a, a safety engineering problem it is a purely safety engineering problem roof movement roof strata movement shock mechanics issue so design of that support system now the scoop battery that will get damaged but it should be fail safe methane liberated explosion taken place ventilation system got damaged so if if you can if you have eliminated this part nothing would have happened or eliminated this part this could might have not happened okay or eliminated this part some control somewhere missing that's why the accident has taken place started from hazard to accident roof movement coal dust accumulation these are all hazards so ultimately because uh, from hazard with with influence of some other inter intermediate events finally lead to accident safety engineer must know that how from this hazard to accident uh, that what is the path those things in the next few class in the concepts uh, i will be telling you what are those things now big issue is material handling so material handling more of health issues as well as that health issue also lead to safety issues so we cannot cannot ignore material handling there are mechanized material handling that manual material handling okay but whatever may be the case that uh, safety issues are very very prevalent in material handling construction working at height you see the different heights people are working it's a huge of gravitational energy so it will may fall so what what uh, how safety engineering will help you here 
is it possible that the safety engineering concept ultimately give you some design solutions, some uh, engineering solutions? I, it is obvious, it is there and you have to find out how to apply it. This is possible if you know, if you have hazard knowledge, if you have design knowledge, if you have previous uh, experiences and if you have the total safety engineering concept, the blueprint, you can apply step by step and finally, you will be able to avoid many accident, not only in the construction, in all industrial situations. So, with those example, and now I want to demark, uh, make the make it clear that what is the differences between health and safety issues. See, it is basically you have to think from the time of impact and severity of impact is there. If the time of impact is long term, it is health issues. If immediate, uh, immediate or short term, it is usually safety issues. There is overlap between health and safety. Okay. So, a, a, a worker exposed to may be a material handling job with, with, with a prolonged awkward posture suffering from musculoskeletal disorder will come under health issues. But the same worker when working uh, doing material handling hit by object or something fall on him that immediate this is safety issues. So, safety and health issues may be one is may be caused to the other, but, but they, they basically be in uh, for people at work they belong uh, side by side. So, there is also certain amount of overlap. So, we in the subjects what uh, we are we will discussing it is on industrial safety engineering not, not health, but many of the concepts can be applied in, in case of health also, but we will not dictate anything related to health may be some example comes somewhere, but primarily our work is safety issues. Who are the responsible, who are responsible to time of effect, short term, medium term, long term, who are the bodies or the stakeholders, regulatory, economic, organizational, operational, technical, research, education, everybody. So, a design engineer who has designed the facility, the product, the machine, the process, he is equally responsible for failure for safety problem. The operational maintenance people responsible, organizational management responsible, there are different regulatory bodies, they are also they are also responsible in the sense they also should con should uh, contribute, they are contributing in terms of accident investigation, safety inspection regulators, economic insure, insure insurance manager, complex will be technician, operators, worker, engineering system design. But from safety engineering point of view, I can tell you that our major concern is the design part. And we believe that, that if I start from this, this I suppose this is my design, design, then your build, then your operation, then maintenance, then disposal, it is a life cycle, life cycle. Here everything you must understand that what are the different types of types of hazards that are exposed to okay by the by the exposed by the workers so and education research i'm i'm not sure how much we are triggered to this because even today uh, btec courses do not have this uh, industrial engineering subject or as such safety engineering subject except for a specific branches like environment, like health, that safety is equally important, and I think there should be uh, there should be basic codes for all the engineers as at least. Now <coughs> I, I will take uh, five minutes of time just to 
to explain you that whatever I have told so far that different accident has taken place and lot of examples we have seen, but there 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 can be model which will which will help you in explaining what is happening. So, in the subsequent time you will also uh, discussed in different ways may be some of the things what is he here or in other place, but grossly that there can the Peterson model is a very good model. It talks about that accident is a as per Peterson model human error and system failure are responsible. Now, when uh, you talk about system failure, system failure is human error, but human error is not human behavior that is what we are saying. Human error is a more technical than human behavior which is more uh, social or behavioral. So, now why human commit error? There will be decision to error or may be trapped to trap to commit that error or overload condition. And then why decision error there are different reasons. What do we mean trap workstation design incompatible display of controls. So, it is basically the system design point of view is coming. Now, capacity with load in a state basically because what now, now it is not the physical capacity it is the mental capacity which is basically coming into consideration. This is one kind of model, but the safety engineers will be more of interested more interested for this more interested for this also. Okay. So, why system fails? what are the reasons of that failure, what are the system breakdown structure, what are the components, subsystem all those things they are inter 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 interplay between the different components, what was the design problem, what was the upper maintenance problem, what where the problem lies, what, what will be the, um, be the uh, safety engineering blueprint, how many hazards are there how those hazards will ultimately con uh, converted to accident, what are the paths from the hazard to accident. So, all those things ultimately uh, you have to determine and at that to be that you require to determine at the design stage at the during design you must anticipate all those things and put prevention mitigation all those things. In subsequent class you will see that what I mean to say about the prevention, mitigation, hazards, hazard uh, accident path and all those things. So, so <clears throat> okay, suppose you want to know um, that what will be the your knowledge base, how do I know that yes I know uh, safety engineering. The knowledge base is very, very, very uh, systematic also. First one is system concept, the, the system you are designing here I am using the word system it may be a product, it may be process a combination of product process many things system concept. So, that means the knowledge about the system what do you mean by knowledge about the system means the design knowledge the system is designed to serve a particular per specific purpose particular period of time may be. So, and for the entire life cycle of the system the design knowledge you must have you know that the how the different components function, what are the designed intended function and whether what are the different parameters, what are the different failure modes, so many things all design knowledge, design knowledge is very very important. That is basically system, the system concept you have to use to know that whether the system you are designing you have full understanding of this or not. Okay. And that system engineering details that is the very very important engineering system details if it is a chemical reactor you must know that what is P and ID for this piping and instrumentation diagram. Then through this diagram you will understand that each of the element component at this diagram what is this function? engineering total it is the I. If you do not have the system knowledge, the engineering details of the system, you are not fit for safety engineering for that context. Okay. So, this is the first thing. 
So, you must know how to represent the system and you must know what are the engineering details of the system. I am by engineering details, system detail, I am not saying that that material design also you have to know, not as such. But the required system engineering knowledge is an important one. Then what happened? The first step, first step is hazard identification. There can be multiple hazards. Then once you identify hazard, then obvi and and then risk assessment. So this is my priority one. Then you must know this. You must know this. You must have concept of this. You must have the concept of human errors. And ultimately, what happened? This hazard identification, human error, risk assessment, safety by design. This will basically leading to prevention through design, PTD, prevention through design. And what do you require? Your from knowledge point of point of view, technical uh, techniques based. Other the system concept important. There are different management tools that is required. There are performance assessment. These are required. These all help you in actually doing industrial safety engineering and data analysis. I will say now safety analytics. It's it's a data driven one also. So so you must have a system knowledge, engineering details. You must understand how to identify hazards. What are way human can compute uh, pro, uh, create error? There will be another one that software error, software. Then then all those things finally lead to risk assessment. After risk assessment, you will quantify. Uh, uh, you will basically what happen? You will identify what are the areas where improvement is needed. Then you 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 must know what is safety by design. And then these management tools, performance assessment tools, data and safety analytics tools, all will be used in between to get the better result. I hope that um, this makes sense to you. And ultimately, this is not the entirety or of uh, the knowledge base. Uh, it is, it is a multi-dimensional, interdisciplinary case. So many more things will be needed in between. But this is what is not still the basic requirement for for a, for a safety engineer. Okay, I hope that subsequent lectures you also enjoy equally. Thank you for joining this particular uh, online course, and uh, hope for the best. Thank you very much.